Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go to my review of WCW's Great American Bash 1997. Starting off the evening we're going to go to our first match of the night. It is Ultimo Dragon versus Psychosis. I thought this was a great match to start Great American Bash 1997. Back and forth matchup between the Dragon and Psychosis with the Dragon keeping the pace of the match. Dragon then lands multiple kicks on Psychosis. Sonny Ono then attacks Ultimo Dragon ringside. Psychosis then hits a leg drop off the top rope on the Dragon. The Dragon then hits a handspring back elbow on Psychosis. Dragon then hits an Acai Moonsault on Psychosis. Dragon then also hits a Frankensteiner off the top rope on Psychosis as well. Sonny Ono then kicks Psychosis thinking it was the Dragon. Dragon then applies the Dragon Sleeper on Psychosis. And your winner of the match is Ultimo Dragon. Hats off to Ultimo Dragon for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Harlem Heat versus the Steiners. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Harlem Heat and the Steiners with Rick hitting a power slam on Stevie Ray. Harlem Heat was keeping the pace of the match with Scott Steiner hitting a Frankensteiner. Vincent then is here. Vincent then hits an elbow on Booker T. And your winners of the match due to disqualification are Harlem Heat. Hats off to Harlem Heat for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Conan versus Hugh Morris. I thought this was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between Conan and Hugh Morris with Conan keeping the pace of the match. Conan ultimately applies his signature tequila sunrise on Hugh Morris. And your winner of the match is Conan. Hats off to Conan for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Wrath versus Glacier. I thought this was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between Wrath and Glacier with Glacier keeping the pace of the match. Mortis throws uh, pretty much like it throws what looks like some kind of brass knuckles into the match. But Glacier ultimately hits Wrath with uh, the chains that I guess Mortis threw in. I thought it was brass knuckles, but Glacier ends up hitting Wrath with the chains, pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Glacier. Hats off to Glacier for getting a win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the WCW Women's Championship. It is Akira Hakuto versus Medusa. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Hakuto and Medusa with Hakuto hitting a pile driver on Medusa. Medusa was trying to keep at the pace of the match, but Hakuto ultimately hits a devastating brain buster on Medusa. Pins for the three, and your winner of the match is Akira Hakuto. Hats off to Akira Hakuto for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Ming versus Chris Benoit. I thought this was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between Benoit and Ming, with Ming keeping the pace of the match. Benoit, though, applies his signature cross face on Ming. Ming ends up tapping out, and your winner of the match is Chris Benoit. Hats off to Chris Benoit for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Steve McMichael versus Kevin Green. I thought this was an okay matchup as well. Back and forth matchup between McMichael and Green with Green keeping the pace of the match. Jarrett makes his way out to the ring. Jarrett then hits McMichael with the briefcase. Green then capitalizes on this, goes for the cover, pins for the three, and your winner of the match is Kevin Green. Hats off to Kevin Green for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the WCW Tag Team Championships. It is the Outsiders versus Roddy Piper and Ric Flair. I thought this was a good matchup as well. Back and forth matchup between the Outsiders and Piper and Flair with Flair unloading strikes on Hall. Nash and Hall were trying to keep the pace of the match with Six attacking Roddy Piper. Flair then attacks Six. Hall then hits a Razor's Edge. Pins for the three. And your winners of the match are the Outsiders. Hats off to the Outsiders for getting a win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the main event of WCW's Great American Bash 1997. It is Diamond Dallas Page versus Randy Savage in a no disqualification match. I thought this was a great match. 
Back and forth matchup between DDP and Savage with DDP keeping the pace of the match. DDP then hits a diamond cutter. Scott Hall makes his way out to the ring. Randy then hits DDP with the championship. Hall then hits an outsider's edge on DDP. And then Randy Savage ultimately hits his signature elbow drop on DDP. Pins for the three. And your winner of the match is Macho Man Randy Savage. A couple of things I'm going to say about the Great American Bash 1997 before I get out of here, man. Number one, this is a solid event. Uh, it's one of my favorite events for WCW of all time. Um, I think, you know, for what it's worth, you know, DDP, uh, not DDP, Dusty Rhodes, uh, rest in peace to the American Dream. This was one of Dusty's visions for pay-per-views, uh, which was the Great American Bash, as, you know, as well as Starcade and some other events that he uh, created. And it just kind of goes, it goes to show you the creative mindset that, you know, Dusty Rhodes had with creating event, creating an event like the Great American Bash. Um, with that being said, though, there was a couple matches on here that I actually really did enjoy, man. Uh, number one, the opening matchup, Ultimo Dragon versus Psychosis. Uh, if you guys watch this podcast, you guys know by now how much I feel about the Cruiserweights. I think the Cruiserweight division for WCW was severely underrated. And I really feel like Eric Bischoff and his staff really didn't know what they had with the Cruiserweight division because there were so many legends that came through the house of WCW, such as Ultimo Dragon, Psychosis, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, Juventu Guerrera, and that's just name a couple cruiserweights that actually walked through the door of WCW and put on fantastic matches for the cruiserweight division. So Ultimo Dragon versus Psychosis was definitely one of the matches that I enjoyed. Uh, Harlem Heat versus the Steiners, again, really did enjoy that match. Two of the best tag teams uh, in the world at that time, in my honest opinion, with the Steiners and Harlem Heat. you got Booker T and Stevie Ray with Harlem Heat, and obviously you have Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner as the Steiner brothers. Both Hall of Fame tag teams. And uh, both had phenom- both teams had phenomenal careers in professional wrestling. So that was definitely a good match to watch as well. Um, Akira Hakuto versus Medusa. It was a solid match. And for what it's worth, um, and I stated this multiple times in the past with WCW, um, it's, a, it's a shame, man, where you know WCW really didn't have a women's roster. Uh, a lot more times than not, it was always Medusa versus Akira Hakuto because I'm assuming Eric Bischoff didn't really want a women's roster on WCW, but... It's crazy, man. I mean, I don't know. I think the issue was at that time is that I think whether it was WWE, WCW, or even ECW for that matter, didn't really feel strong about a women's division. Um, I mean, at that time, obviously, you know, there was the WWE Women's Championship, but a lot of the matches back then were a lot different then than they are now. Uh, And, you know, there wasn't a women's revolution at that time that we got, you know, years, decades later with, you know, the likes of like Paige and Sasha Banks and Bailey and Charlotte and and Becky Lynch, you know, that, that revolution wasn't there at that time. So ECW, I know didn't have a women's division at all. Um, I mean, the amount of women that were on the roster, if you want to call it that for ECW were the likes of Francine, Dawn Marie, um, Beulah McGillicuddy, if you want to put her in there as well, Sonny, there really wasn't a women's roster for ECW. It was kind of hand-in-hand hand with WCW. They really didn't have a women's roster, even though they had a women's world championship. But nine times out of ten, if it was a match for WCW on the card for the women's championship, it was nine times out of ten, it was going to be Hakuto versus Medusa, which is a shame, man, because I really think they could have had a really good women's division uh, for WCW, especially the talent they had over in Japan um, as far as uh, women's roster is concerned. So I, I thought it would have been really cool to see a women's division on WCW, but unfortunately, uh, we didn't get that. Uh, Chris Benoit versus Ming, again, solid matchup, man. I mean, you have two competitors where you have Ming, who's just an under, like just a force to be reckoned with, number one. And two, you know, and I mentioned this multiple times about Benoit, and I'll even mention it even now, you know, obviously I don't agree with what Benoit did, um, you know, in his life, towards the end of his life. But what I will say, um, as far as in-ring ability, in-ring talent, uh, Benoit was the total package as far as in-ring ability, athleticism, uh, and what he brought to the table as far as an in-ring talent. I think Benoit had all the skills and tangibles that he needed to be a multi-time world champion. Um, and honestly, one of the best technical wrestlers I've ever seen. I mean, not saying he's better than Bret Hart, um, but what I will say as far as a technician wrestler standpoint, Benoit is definitely up there as one of the best technical wrestlers out there um, with, you know, obviously the, the flying headbutt and stuff like that. But, you know, every time Benoit stepped in the ring, I always felt like when I watched his matches, he always gave 110% in his matches no matter who he was going up against that night. So 
this match between Ming and Benoit made for a great match. Um, other matches on this card as well. The Outsiders versus Piper and Flair. Um, it was a really good match, man. It was kind of nostalgic for me. You know, obviously the Outsiders were a big deal for WCW, but having the likes of Piper and Flair teaming up as a tag team to go up against Hall and Nash, man, it was a solid match. A lot of fans were gravitated towards this match, and it was cool to see. But, you know, Piper and uh, Flair, unfortunately, didn't get the win. And uh, Hall ended up securing the win with the Outsiders' edge on Piper. So, you know, hats off to the Outsiders for getting the win in that match. And then the main event, DDP versus Randy Savage in a no-disqualification match. It was a great storyline between DDP and Savage at that time. Um, And having this no-disqualification match was awesome. Uh, and not only that, you know, hats off to Randy Savage. Even in the storyline, there was a couple of times that Randy did put over DDP. Because I think Randy had a lot of, you know, admiration for Diamond Dallas Page at that time. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Randy Savage saw a lot of himself in DDP at that time. And uh, had a lot of respect for Diamond Dallas Page. And I'm sure the respect was mutual between both Randy and Diamond Dallas. So, this made for a great main event, all in all, for the Great American Bash of 1997. But... Uh, with that being said, man, just like I do with every single one of these pay-per-views, I always give these pay-per-views a rating from 1 out of a 10. 1 being the worst, 10 being the all-time best. I'm going to have to give Great American Bash 1997 a solid ranking rating of a 5 at best, man. But uh, this is my review of the Great American Bash 1997. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful, and remember, stay classic. Peace.